The real deepest source of beauty is your connection to spirit inside of you. I want you to know that there are other approaches that are just as effective in helping you lose and maintain weight, but are also about having great skin and feeling amazing. To be truly well and truly healthy, you need to nourish the four cornerstones of your life. Hi beauties, I'm Kimberly Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me on this amazing journey. To start, let's talk about what is true beauty? We live in a world where the word beauty is thrown around constantly. You probably hear it or are exposed to the word beauty dozens of times in one day. It is the subject of whole magazines, websites, aisles, and stores. And the way that most of us largely associate beauty is through the mainstream media channels, which provide an onslaught of images and messages that focus on the external aspect of beauty. These can often make you feel that you are not enough, according to the most current standards and definitions. We've been taught to believe that when it comes to products, processes, and workouts, more equals better results and therefore more beauty. But unfortunately, this definition of beauty is all about image. <laughs> it's like eating a bunch of empty calories. They seem appealing at first, and then you end up with a very unsatisfied feeling. If we only focus on image and trying to achieve beauty externally, we find that we are losing a never-ending battle. And even when you lose those last 10 pounds or you start growing healthy hair, it's nice, but it's not the end-all be-all we are still seeking. What I found in over a decade of being an author, nutritionist, and working in wellness is that if we focus on just one area of our lives, such as food and diet, we can't really achieve the highest expression of our beauty or our health, and we are not able to feel the wholeness that is our true source of power and also deep peace and joy. The mantra of my philosophy is nourish your whole self and feel good. This essentially means that we need to nourish all aspects of our whole self, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. And that leads us to feeling good. Feeling good as I define it means increasing our overall level of health and wellness, connecting with your body, experiencing personal growth, being in tune with the true needs of your body, and having more clarity and making lifestyle choices to feel energized and healthy and to support your unique beauty and journey. Often though, we don't feel good. We don't feel that we are beautiful and we don't feel lovable or unique because we are often imbalanced in our lives in one area, not nourishing one part of our lives and overemphasizing others. For instance, it's common to hyper-focus on our diets because food is something tangible that we all see and pick up. But at the same time, if we don't have tools for fostering emotional well-being, let's say, you can end up suppressing a lot of unprocessed emotions. And this can disrupt your hormones, your nervous system, adrenals, um, and body in many numerous ways. You will have a much harder time losing belly fat and excessive body weight, and your skin may age more quickly. And the stress and the weight of holding on to so much emotional baggage can make you feel anxious and heavy and not able to enjoy the beauty of everyday life. So the gist is that everything affects everything else. And to be truly well and truly healthy, you need to nourish the four major areas, the four cornerstones of your life. So the first cornerstone is food. Food is an important starting place for many of us on the journey to healing our bodies and feeling better overall. We all need to eat every day and food inevitably affects our health, our moods, the quality of our skin, everything. Food was the starting place for me personally on my journey and the chronic bloating and confusion from being a chronic fad dieter that I was was a primary fo focus area to get under control before I could go into deeper awareness of myself. So I often see food as the beginning of the journey for most of us, although certainly it is not the end. 
Working with food shifts our energy so that we can be lighter in our bodies and our being, and this in turn benefits and opens up the energy across our whole lives. The physical expression of our beauty, our relationships, and our day-to-day life experience. There is a reason that every yoga master talked about diet as an essential component of being able to make progress in this lifetime, both in inner peace, meditation, true self-love, and self-realization. In this course, we are going to be covering a lot of information about food, as well as instructions on basic recipes, including some of my signature recipes, such as the glowing green smoothie, Dharma's kale salad, raw cacao truffles, and the everyday awesome soup so that you can learn to eat in a way that will build your beauty, your energy, and your health long-term. Now, our second cornerstone is body. There are many important practices to take care of your body beyond food. Why is this important? This is important because we are having an embodied experience. Your body is your temple for taking you through the journey of this lifetime. Your body stores the energy of emotions, processes stress that is felt across your nervous system, and when your body is in pain or doesn't feel good, it is nearly impossible to feel truly beautiful and energized. Working to create a healthy, balanced body is a critical part of wellness because if your body is off balance, so too will your whole life. In this course, we cover information related to this cornerstone, such as daily lifestyle practices, essential supplements, how to take care of your skin in order to create an amazing glow, nourishing movement practices such as yoga, syncing to sacred healthy rhythms such as proper sleep, morning, evening, and midday self-care practices and routines. Just as there are collective rhythms, such as the circadian rhythms that are on a 24 hour cycle in nature, creating rhythm and balance across your body and lifestyle, including with your own digestion, hair and skin growth, hormones, (laughs) menstrual cycles, and sleep are all important for feeling your best and connecting to your true beauty. The third cornerstone is emotional well being. This is the cornerstone that often needs a lot of love and nourishment for most people. Just because we don't see our emotions like the way that we see food doesn't mean that our emotions don't have a profound effect on our health, beauty, and happiness. More and more research is emerging, including the studies I reference in my latest book, Recipes for Your Perfectly Imperfect Life, about how our thought patterns have a direct impact on the levels of inflammation in our body and bloating. Unprocessed emotions become repressed and suppressed down into the very cellular structure of your being. And this can manifest in chronic pain, illness, fatigue, weight gain, and even accelerated aging. As a community, we focus on creating emotional well-being through processing and sharing, like in the Saluna Circle and listening to the Feel Good Podcast and other positive podcasts, journaling, affirmations, and other tools to create paradigm shifts. The letting go technique described in this course and using medicinal plants, such as ginger, cloves, Ayurvedic herbs, and so on, in a very conscious way in elixirs and daily practices. We'll be talking about some of these tools to address emotional well-being in various parts of this entire course. And lastly, our fourth cornerstone is spiritual growth. The real deepest source of beauty is your connection to spirit inside of you. It is the perfection that comes simply from the fact that you are alive. The more you connect to that, the more energy of that connection pours out of you and becomes a tangible beauty that others can feel and experience. It can't be faked, it can't be painted on, and it can't be bought and acquired. As Ram Das writes in Be Here Now, We've all touched people who were so beautiful as beings that we never notice whether they are physically beautiful. It's like an eternal beauty lives within them. 
This cornerstone includes an emphasis on stillness practices, such as meditation, mindfulness, and connecting with our inner world. The amount of research centered around meditation and mindfulness is staggering with an emphasis on reducing inflammation, creating stress, and limiting beliefs that stagnate our joyfulness and potential. Tapping into universal energy through meditation and spiritual practices can very positively impact our hormone levels, adrenal, nervous, and endocrine systems, true beauty, and overall well-being. As you proceed with our course, you will find that everything falls into one or a few of these cornerstones. What we are trying to create is a balanced, powerful, and holistic system of helping you tap into your unique expression of beauty so you can feel the truth of how beautiful you are once and for all. So I'd like to talk for a few minutes about numbers. This course is not designed to provide you with the minutia of specific grams of foods and calories you should be eating. Those numbers are forever changing depending on which diet you are following, not to mention that they're ridiculously confusing. And we all know that calorie counting doesn't work in a consistent way for the long term. There's always that disheartening yo-yo with the scale. Most diets, unfortunately, are focused on the number of calories or how many grams of carbs and protein to consume, yet make no effort to deduce how efficiently or not our system can break down or use any given food. Such formula-based eating plans do not consider the factor of beauty energy and how our energy is used up in digesting foods that are difficult to break down. Calories and grams of carbs and proteins alone do not give a holistic picture of how healthy a food is within the human body, how nutrient dense it is, or how much fiber it has. Nor does it give us any clue as to the amount of foreign chemicals, preservatives, and additives that can be in that given food. In essence, using numbers alone to determine our diet is a very limited approach. That is the very reason that dieting and losing weight has always seemed like such a miserable chore and struggle. A struggle which most of us feel that we are losing along with our energy levels. So I have good news. We are not going to be counting calories. Yes, you heard that right. No more calorie counting. For generations, people have stayed slim and healthy without ever counting calories. When we look at pictures from the turn of the century to say the 1950s or so, isn't it amazing how relatively slim everyone is? Obesity was not a widespread issue, yet no one counted calories or things like grams of protein or carbs. They also didn't eat all the processed foods and low fat, low calorie diet foods. Calorie counting is a truly modern invention and while I don't have anything against new ways of doing things, I do feel that this obsession with numbers is designed to confuse us and hold us back from being our best, most beautiful selves. Calorie counting will ensure that you eat foods to promote your beauty or that will help you clean out your body of aging acidic toxins. We do want to eat higher quality and fewer calories in general to maintain our health and weight but the great news is that we don't have to obsess over it. When you fuel your body with quality, nutritious foods, this will happen naturally. Now you may be wondering, okay, but how much am I supposed to eat then? Most of us are out of touch with our true hunger needs and how much fuel our bodies actually require that we have no sense of when we're truly hungry or full. As we begin to cleanse our body, our systems will start to optimally absorb nutrients and we will start feeling full faster. Simultaneously, we will shift into consuming mostly nutrient dense and fiber filled foods, which will allow us to get the nutrition with far fewer calories anyway, whether we are consciously counting or not. I stopped counting calories as well as grams of fat, carbs, and protein over a decade ago. I'm not saying that you can't lose weight counting, 
Sure you can, but I want you to know that there are other approaches that are just as effective in helping you lose and maintain weight, but are also about having great skin, exhibiting beauty from the inside out with vitality and high energy, and feeling amazing. Here are some dietary tips on filling up and slimming down without counting. First of all, fill up on fiber. Fiber is actually a natural form of portion control. It makes you full with bulk. So at the beginning of each meal, eat a big salad or an all veggie soup and pair a lot of cooked veggies with whatever denser foods you are eating, whether it be a pile of lentils, some fish or some nuts. Secondly, eat as close to the natural whole state of a food as possible. This will maximize its natural health giving properties, including minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, and so on. And it will make it easier for that food to break down in your body. Thirdly, be sure to properly hydrate in between meals with plenty of room temperature water. And lastly, follow the light to heavy and proper food combining principles as we will discuss next. There is something in science called biomimicry which involves in part looking at similar species in nature and how they eat in order to determine the optimal diet. This is part of honoring and respecting the all encompassing wisdom of mother nature, which has far more complexity and depth than human understanding. And it also supersedes conflicting nutritional studies and confusion. So let's start by looking at the human body we will find that the human body most closely relates to that of primates. We share an estimated 99.4% of our DNA with chimpanzees. By nature, these animals are vegetarian with 86% of its diet composed of green leaves and the other 14% from roots, flowers, fruit, and bark. Our livers too are designed to largely digest plant foods. Our livers have a low tolerance for uric acid, the byproduct of digesting heavy, excessive animal protein. Humans also have a much lower amount of stomach acid than carnivorous animals, actually less than 10 times the amount. Our intestines are about 12 times as long as our torso length and are designed to be long so there is adequate time to absorb the minerals and nutrients from plant matter which breaks down and moves through our bodies much faster than animal protein does. There are over 3,500 scientific studies involving over 15,000 research scientists that report a relationship between the consumption of meats, poultry, eggs, and dairy products, and the incidence of numerous health issues, including heart disease, cancer, kidney failure, constipation, gout, gallstones, diverticulitis, hemorrhoids, and osteoporosis. Being naturally beautiful involves living as closely as possible to our natural lifestyle and diet. And when you examine our anatomy, you find that while we are omnivores, clearly we were meant to eat a large amount of plant foods and a plant-centric diet. Now I wanna be clear, it's not all or nothing. You don't have to be all plant-based or not, but eating a largely plant-based diet or an all plant-based diet if you choose to is certainly nutrient dense, lighter, allows for less toxicity to accumulate in your system and will surely support your beauty. So now let's talk about the importance of whole grains. I wanna talk about this upfront because I know how confusing it can be when there are conflicting things you hear all the time, such as whole grains are great for you, and on the other hand, you should avoid all grains, even in their whole form. It's literally the opposite advice that you hear from different factions of experts. So in cases like these, it's important to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. First of all, billions around the world live long, healthy lives on a grain-inclusive diet. In the Okinawa Centarian study, researchers found that rice was a dietary staple before Western influence in 1949. After that point, however, when they began consuming less rice as a proportion of their calories, their health collectively declined and disease became more prevalent. 
And when a Harvard research team studied more than 110,000 healthy men and women for about 25 years, they discovered that those who avoided whole grains in general had an increased risk of heart disease. So I do recommend including gluten-free whole grains, such as quinoa and millet, which are actually technically both seeds, but we treat as grains, brown rice, oats, teff, and amaranth as part of a balanced diet. Such grains are a great source of energy, minerals, vitamins, and protein. In our book, Radical Beauty, my co-author Deepak Chopra and I went into great detail breaking down the very conjectural basis of the paleo diet as an example of a diet that recommends avoiding grains. Historically, anthropologists reach a consensus that only about 33% of foods consumed by hunter-gatherer societies were animal-based but the foundation of paleo was based on some alterations of these definitions, making that percentage seem much higher. So I will say it's important to stay curious about the basis of claims, maintain an open mind, and not be fearful of grains just because they have been vilified by certain groups. Often, when one tries to avoid grains, they end up going super heavy on animal protein. And we know from a great body of research that diets that are super high in animal fat and protein correlate strongly with higher rates of disease, including heart disease and cancer of the prostate, breast, and colon. Excessive animal protein can put a heavy burden on digestion, which is energy exhaustive and taxes the kidney and livers. A study in the journal Cell Metabolism found that a person with high animal protein consumption, meaning over 20% of calories coming from meat, is four times likely to die from cancer, a similar rate to that of cigarette smokers. Ultimately, my goal is not to preach or win any kind of argument or debate with proponents of higher animal food-based diets. Each of us has to listen to our own bodies and hearts and do what we feel is true and best. My intention for this discussion is simply to offer my opinion that a whole food plant-based diet or largely plant-based diet including vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, legumes, and gluten-free grains, is a beautiful and powerfully rejuvenating way to support your highest health, vitality, and your true beauty. Choose, if you can, a plant-based or largely plant-based diet. Plant foods are the most nutrient-dense, nourishing foods on the planet, and only plant foods contain cleansing fiber. So remember, it's all about progress, not perfection. This is a long-term lifestyle. But just in general, keep in mind that the more nutrient-dense plant foods that are in your diet, the more cleansed and the lighter in your body you will feel as you gain strength, increased energy, beautiful skin and hair, and more focus. Also, try to eat sprouted grains and legumes that are gluten-free because gluten can be difficult for many of us to digest. Another helpful thing overall is taking digestive enzymes, especially before eating grain and any other dense foods. And a final note in this section, choose organic whenever possible. Organic is super important for our true health as well as the entire planet. In order to be our most healthy, radiant, beautiful, energetic self, we need to avoid exposure to toxic chemicals. Non-organic agriculture itself uses billions of pounds of chemical pesticides and herbicides annually. The average application in the United States adds up to be about 16 pounds of chemical pesticides per person every year. And what's truly scary about that is that the National Academy of Sciences reports that 90% of these chemicals that are applied to foods have not been tested for long-term health effects before they are deemed safe, quote unquote. The potential impacts of pesticides on our bodies include endocrine complications, birth defects, cancer, brain damage, and more. Besides, organically grown foods are more flavorful and contain more nutrients, including more vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and micronutrients than commercially grown foods. The Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine conducted a review of 41 published studies comparing the nutritional value of organically grown and conventionally grown fruits, vegetables, and grains 
and concluded that there are significantly more of certain nutrients, including iron, vitamin C, phosphorus, and magnesium in organic food crops. So choosing organic is also the best thing to do to support farming as it is in harmony with nature, which includes crop rotation for healthier soil, more biodiversity, and better support for the larger ecosystem. It helps to reduce pollution and protects our water and soil from agricultural chemicals, pesticides, and fertilizers that contaminate our environment and all the other species that call planet Earth their home as well. Let's discuss some foundational dietary information to help us feel and to be our most beautiful. You've heard of most of these components of food, but I want to go through them all from the perspective of beauty inside out and supporting your natural, unique beauty. Let's start with macronutrients. There are three macronutrients, fat, carbohydrates, and protein. Eliminating any of these macronutrients from your diet and overemphasizing the other two can create an inevitable imbalance in your body. Super low fat and super low carb diets are examples of such diets that can promote imbalance. Balance is a key facet in nature creating optimal beauty and imbalance in any form is a surefire way to diminish your beauty. You will see that when we talk about percentages of each macronutrient, there is quite a large range. And this is because everybody's body is very different and will thrive on a slightly different percentage of nutrients. So you have to feel your own body and the right exact amount of fat, carbs, and protein that is ideal for you that leaves you feeling energized yet still light within these recommended ranges. The first macronutrient is fat. Eating fat is essential for beauty and health, but you don't need to overdo it. The source of fat in your diet is extremely important. 15 to 30% of your diet should come from healthy fats, and you should get most of your fat from nutrient-dense seeds, nuts, and avocados. Coconut oil is great for cooking. Try to avoid congestive fats, trans fats, vegetable oils, and excessive animal fats as well. Now, the second macronutrient is carbohydrates. Carbs provide energy for your muscles, brain, and central nervous system. The brain depends exclusively on carbs for energy, and research has found that eating carbs increases serotonin release. Normal serotonin levels are important for helping you feel balanced, elevating your mood, regulating your appetite, and helping you with healthy sleep patterns. About 50 to 70% of your diet can be made up from complex carbohydrates, including vegetables, legumes, and fruits. Let's take a quick look at the types of carbs that are in different foods and how they help your nutrition. Simple and refined carbs are the carbs that are found in white sugar, refined white flour products, jams, and sodas. These carbs are broken down in your system very quickly and can create a surge in blood sugar levels and insulin release. They can also lead to chronic inflammation. Excessive sugar can lead to growth of bad bacteria, providing a breeding ground for candida imbalance that leads to acne, bloating, and constipation. Now, on the other hand, complex carbs, also known as starches, include starchy vegetables, beans and legumes, whole unrefined and gluten-free grains, such as brown rice, quinoa, millet, and oats, are more structurally complex and take longer to break down and digest. They enter the bloodstream more slowly and do not cause a dramatic spike in insulin levels. They have a stabilizing effect on your body and provide sustained energy. They contain a lot of minerals and beauty nutrients. Fiber-rich indigestible carbs such as chia seeds, flax seeds, and mushrooms are not broken down finely enough for your body to absorb them and are not a source of energy or calories, but they are also very helpful as they help you feel full, help sustain your energy, and help you sweep toxins from your body. Now, as we all know, there are plenty of low-carb diets out there like Atkins and Keto to help you lose weight. And guess what? They may work at least temporarily. 
but there is a danger. Diets that are excessively low in carbs can also lead to fatigue, dehydration, constipation, and bad breath. So while you may get some short-term benefits from going low carb, in the long run, a low carb diet can make you less revitalized and beautiful. So remember, we don't want to demonize any of the macronutrients if we properly food combine, take digestive enzymes, eat plenty of fiber, and find the right percentage in our diet for our unique bodies, we can and should eat healthy carbs. The third macronutrient is protein. Protein is made up of amino acids, the building blocks of every cell. Amino acids are found in all natural foods in varying amounts, and they can be combined from smaller units to create whole proteins. We need much less protein than people believe. If your diet contains enough calories, you most likely will get more than enough protein. On the other hand, excessive protein puts a heavy burden on your digestion and is taxing on your liver and kidneys. It can lead to an increased accumulation of uric acid and even kidney stones. It can also lead to a loss of calcium from your bones because Diets that are excessively high in protein are acid forming after the protein is metabolized. The China study found strong evidence of the diet's role in cancer growth and a correlation between super high levels of protein and cancer growth. So keep this in mind when you think about protein. 10 to 20% of your diet can be made up of protein. And please also remember that your body recycles proteins, so you don't have to ingest complex proteins at every single meal. Still, protein is definitely essential for beauty inside out. So here are some of my favorites. Great plant-based sources of protein include lentils, legumes and beans, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, almonds and other nuts, quinoa, millet, teff, mushrooms, green veggies, non-GMO organic soy, preferably fermented like tempeh and miso, Brussels sprouts, and all other whole veggies. Again, it's not just what we eat that matters, but the order in which we eat our food. The concept of light to heavy is designed to enhance digestion, to get the most out of your food, and to help you free up energy. We want to optimally assimilate nutrients in our food and then efficiently release wastes. This helps to reduce gassiness, bloating, and wasted energy, all things that contribute to energy leaks, aging, and diminish our beauty. So here are some general notes on eating light to heavy, which applies throughout the day and also within each meal itself. Let's start with breakfast. We've often been told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and that we need to load up right away. But unfortunately, eating overly heavily in the morning is a recipe for a lot of our energy going straight to digestion in the morning and away from our minds, our creativity, and other parts and processes within our bodies, including rebuilding our skin and supporting our other organs. So our first principle is this. We will never eat when we are not truly hungry. So if our body is not telling us that we are hungry, it is also telling us that we certainly don't need any food. What we do in the morning is critical for achieving our goals, hence our all-important morning ritual, which we outlined in day two. When you wake up in the morning, you have a fresh start. We haven't yet put any new food in our bodies since the evening before, so your body will start to go to work eliminating and cleaning out what is already in your system. For many of us, this is the only time in the day when our body's energy is not consumed in digesting something, but can instead be directed into actually cleansing. So in the morning, you may wake up with some pungent body odors, bad breath, a coated tongue, sleep in your eyes, and so on, which are all ways your body is trying to actually eliminate toxins and waste. We cannot get energy from food until nutrients from that food have been absorbed in the small intestine. 
With typical heavier breakfast foods like egg white omelets, processed protein bars, and pancakes, at least a few hours must pass before we even get energy out of all of them. During those first few hours, they are still being digested in our stomach. So instead of gaining energy, you will be using energy to break them down and digest them. So the best thing to do in the morning is to keep it nutrient dense and also light with the glowing green smoothie. And then at least half an hour after you've had your smoothie, if you're still hungry, you can eat some avocado toast, oatmeal or coconut yogurt as some other good, easily digestible options, which will not weigh you down in the morning. Next, let's talk about lunch, which is right in the middle of the day. We know that we need nutrients, but we also don't want to eat so heavily at lunch and miscombine our foods so that we get exhausted. There is a reason that there are two to three hour siestas in Europe where everybody goes home and takes a nap. Ayurveda has traditionally taught us to eat our biggest meal in the middle of the day when the sun is at its peak and digestive fire is believed to be very strong. However, in modern life, we don't get super long lunches to chew really well and relax. And usually we have to keep working after lunch. So I have found in my experience that if we eat overly heavy at lunch, we may need more caffeine and cravings for sugar and other stimulants may creep in to help us keep up our energy, which can get very sluggish with all the directed energy into our digestive tracts over other functions upon eating a very heavy, um, very big lunch. So in contrast, I recommend eating a very veggie forward lunch full of fiber and other nutrients. Some examples are a big salad and some kind of stew or soup cooked veggies and lentils, an avocado and sprout wrap, veggie sushi rolls, and so on. I do recommend trying to cut animal protein out of your lunch, at least for some meals, as you start to build more plant-based from the morning up. For more beauty nutrients and keeping your body more clean, detoxed, and beautiful. And if you do eat animal protein, doing so at dinner will give you more time to relax and chew better and enjoy your meal with family, friends, or simply by yourself. Be sure to take your digestive enzymes before and remember that you simply don't need to eat animal protein more than once a day. You'll feel lighter and create a much lighter digestive load on your body, which is a wonderful way to support your natural true beauty. Now, Let's talk about dinner. So let's say we kept ourselves light and the path clear for proper digestion all the way up until the evening. Amazing. Now we can enjoy a nice dinner with some heavier foods, depending on what your body needs and is calling for. Generally, we want to eat dinner at least three hours or so before bed to make sure you fully digest before sleep. Try eating veggies cooked and raw as in salad with a heavier protein or starch item, take your digestive enzymes first and properly food combine as we will discuss next. Now let's talk about food combining. Proper food combining or beauty food pairing, as I've also referred to it in my prior books, is about combining the foods that you eat in a strategic way so that you use less energy when you digest those foods. This in turn leads you to having greater energy overall, healthier, more glowing skin, an easier time losing weight and slimming down, and more mental clarity. It is yet another tool to support your beauty. Digestion is a very energy intensive process. And if we strategically make it easier on our bodies with the combinations of foods that we put together, we can free up large amounts of our own vital energy. Our bodies are hot 98 degrees and have various biochemical reactions taking place, all of which must be accounted for. Because our bodies are such a hot temperature, the longer a food stays in our bodies, the more of a chance for improper digestion, toxin buildup, bloating, and gassiness. 
When I personally started practicing food combining a lot of the time, I'm certainly not perfect like all of us, I noticed that my energy went up, my skin got better, and my bloating went way down. For the purposes of our course, we will hit some top line food combining information to support you in your beauty and vitality. If you're super interested in this topic, for all the detailed information on food combining that you could ever want, please check out my first book, which is called The Beauty Detox Solution. For now, let's discuss just a few basic food combining principles. The first and foremost rule of all is to simplify your meals. The more simple your meal is, the better you will digest it. Every single food requires different substrates and enzymes from your very complex GI tract to break it down. And this is a significant amount of work on your body. So it's better to eat fewer items and eat more of them than eat 30 different items at once. For instance, this translates to loading up on greens and veggies at the salad bar and getting one heavier item like lentils or bean stew versus a tiny amount of four to five heavier items. Secondly, drink significant quantities of water in between meals. It's key for beauty, energy, and health to stay hydrated. You want to start your day off hydrated with room temperature water and again hot water with lemon and drinking the glowing green smoothie. Beyond that, be sure to keep water on your desk or in your car so you regularly sip water to stay hydrated in between meals and at least a half hour between your meals or about an hour following meals. During meal times, drink as little as possible. Too much liquid with meals actually dilutes your digestive juices and enzymes and delays and slows down digestion. It creates what is like a sludgy pond in your system where the food is mixed in with the liquids. You can sip water if you need to during meals, especially if you're eating a spicy meal, but it's better to go into your meal hydrated. And again, drink only significant amounts of water in between meals instead for optimal digestion. Our third food combining principle is to eat fruit only on an empty stomach. The exception to this is to is eating fruit with greens, such as in the glowing green smoothie. Why is this? It's because fruit is basically composed of simple sugars, micronutrients, water, and fiber. It digests very quickly out of your stomach. So if you eat fruit after eating heavier foods like protein, it can get stuck in your stomach. And this can create a backup that will result in fermentation, putrefaction, bloat, gas, and possibly weight gain. It also robs us of our beauty energy because the harder it is for our body to digest foods and the more energy we spend on digestion, the less energy we have overall. So to sum up, practicing these basic principles of light to heavy and proper food combining are very powerful tools to free up the incredible intelligence of your body's energy from digestion and therefore be able to direct it towards all of the other functions in your body and boost your beauty. So now I'm going to give you a visual to demonstrate the power of proper food combining. So let's say that there is a highway <laughs> and these boxes represent different cars on the road. So let's say the traffic is flowing this way and the small box represents a sports car like a Ferrari. The medium box is like a SUV car, Land Rover sort of vehicle. And this big box here is an 18 wheel truck. So imagine we have the road with the same cars, but positioned in a different order. Now again, if the road is flowing this way, and this is choice one, and this is choice two, which order would you put the cars in and why? You think that to yourself. <laughs> and I'll give you the answer right now, which is, if you look at it from a logical standpoint, you would probably choose option one. And that's because the Ferrari is in the front and everything is moving along the road at a, 
at a very good pace. In this situation, if we put the 18-wheeler in front, what happens is the Ferrari is stuck in the back. And that means a traffic jam. It means that the Ferrari's in the back, probably spinning its wheels, it can't get fast, and the whole road starts to get congested. So if you think about this from a digestion standpoint, instead of cars, if we were to call this very fast moving vehicle fruit, which we, as we have covered in this course, is basically micronutrients, a lot of water and simple sugars. It's digested very, very quickly out of your stomach. So let's say that the big 18-wheeler is um, some dense protein. So let's say it could be some nuts or some fish, something like that. So you can see in this analogy with the road, you could actually eat the same foods, but it will digest completely differently in your body, which is supportive of the theory of food combining and also light to heavy, which we cover in this section. You eat the fruit first, it goes in, it's digested, and it gets into your duodenum, the, small, the top of your small intestine, where you start to absorb the nutrients. Then you start to digest the heavier food, which takes more hours in your stomach, and it goes along at its own pace. In contrast, were you to eat the protein first, and then you think, oh, I'm gonna be healthy, I'm not gonna eat the chocolate cake, but I'm gonna eat the blueberries for dessert, you've actually created a digestive disaster, so to speak, where the fruit cannot get through, it cannot get past, so it will start to ferment prematurely in your stomach, which means bloating, gassiness, and perhaps worst of all, because our body is so hot, this hot mammalian body temperature, a lot of the nutrients will have been wasted by the time it even gets to your small intestine. So this is a simple demonstration to show that it's not just what we eat, but the order and the combination, which makes a huge difference in your energy, your health, and your beauty. Now, let's expand our discussion to talk about diet and lifestyle details that you can also utilize to build that beautiful, clear, glowing skin. When we eat, we aren't just eating for energy. We are eating to provide nutrients to the largest organ in your body, which is your skin. If you want to keep your skin glowing as much as possible, reduce your meat intake to a maximum of 10 to 15% of your overall diet or eliminate it altogether. Also, eliminate dairy, as research has linked that it can be actually a cause for acne. Next, cut out inflammatory foods like refined sugars and increase your consumption of whole plant foods while continuing to clean your body of mucus and toxins. Dr. Shinya, author of The Enzyme Factor and Chief of Surgical Endoscopy at Beth Israel Medical Center, points out that a diet including excessive animal protein creates toxic byproducts that can damage the DNA, put excessive burden on the kidneys and liver, create calcium deficiencies and osteoporosis. Worn out cells that are not eliminated from your body can turn up on our skin in the form of age spots called lipofuscin. They come from a mixture of free radical damaged fats, proteins, sugars, and heavy metals. Second, Eat beauty foods that are filled with vitamins and minerals. Here's a list of some of my top favorite beauty foods. First, red bell peppers. These peppers are super high in vitamin C, which helps repair and regenerate collagen. And they're also a good source of silicon, which helps to diminish wrinkles and makes our skin more supple. Coconut is the next one. It's one of the best natural hydrators, which aids in the healing and rejuvenation of your skin's collagen and helps restore elasticity to your skin. Next is avocados. Everyone loves avocados. They are high in monounsaturated fats, which help with skin rejuvenation and moisturizing. And avocados are high in glutamine, which helps protect your skin from environmental damage, and glutathione, an antioxidant that helps prevent aging. Next is spinach. This leafy green is rich in beta carotene, which converts to anti-aging vitamin A. And it also has phytonutrients, such as carotenoids and flavonoids, that help protect your skin against damaging free radicals. Next is celery. Celery is a magical skin food that has always been part of the classic glowing green smoothie recipe, by the way, and it helps to balance your electrolytes. 
It's really important for protecting the delicate skin underneath your eyes and helping to prevent puffiness in your face. Next, we have sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are an excellent starchy vegetable to include in your diet as they contain both vitamins A and C and help to neutralize cell tissue damaging free radicals. They have high levels of carotenoids and beta carotene, which the body converts into vitamin A. Next is cabbage. Cabbage seems like a really humble food. It's super inexpensive, but it's actually incredible for your skin. It contains the magical beauty triumvirate of vitamins A, C, and E. And it is not commonly known that cabbage actually contains 11% more vitamin C than oranges by weight, but it's true. Vitamin C helps heal damaged tissues and minimizes deep wrinkles in our skin. Next, I wanna call out sprouts. Sprouts are one of the most powerful tools for cellular regeneration and health. They're so tiny, they're so inexpensive, but yet they contain an incredible range of nutrients to cleanse your body, nourish your cells and tissues, and contribute to a beautiful glow. Sprouts are, in essence, a pre-digested food whose nutrients are extremely easy for your body to assimilate and use. Sprouts supply a potent amount of antioxidants, protein, enzymes, and minerals like iron, calcium, and sulfur. Broccoli is our next food, which contains vitamin A and has collagen smoothing and repairing properties. Broccoli also has fabulous anti-aging benefits, such as phytonutrients, fiber, and antioxidants, which helps to purge our body of toxins and helps to keep our skin fresh and bright. Hi, beauties. Thank you so much for joining me for this Taste of Beauty Inside Out. While working on the script for this course, I drew on all of my past books from the Beauty Detox Solution to Recipes for Your Perfectly Imperfect Life and basically wrote a new book in the process. That's because becoming beautiful inside out is not a quick fix by this sort of process. It requires us to look at our entire lifestyle from the food that we eat to when and how we eat to the thoughts that we let ferment in our consciousness how we can wake up more mindfully to rituals that wind us down gently at night. What is true beauty? The power of ongoing cleansing, eating to support a beautiful body and spirit, skin and hair care, essential beauty recipes, sacred goddess archetypes, connecting with your worth, integration, stillness, and the source of beauty. Although this course is 10 days long, let's not forget that this is a lifestyle a process where we gently and compassionately connect and embody our most beautiful self. With that in mind, I encourage you to purchase long-term access to this course. When you have questions or feel a need of fresh inspiration and encouragement, this course will be right there for you in your commune library, ready to support you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this interview from the Commune Podcast, then I think you'll love this video right here. What you can learn at the beginning of your business, you should learn because learning from experience is really different than being told by an expert, whatever expert means.